everyone. Welcome to Eskimo TV. We're talking today to Dr. Raj Malipedi. Dr. Malipedi is a consultant dermatologist and dermatological surgeon based in London in the UK. He works both the NHS and private sector and is head of the dermatological surgery and laser unit at St. John's Institute of Dermatology, St. Thomas's Hospital. Hi, Dr. Malipedi. How are you? Uh, fine, thanks, Joanne. Uh, great to be here. Wonderful to be talking to you too. Let's talk today about Mohs micrographic surgery. What is Mohs surgery and why is it called Mohs? Well, Mohs micrographic surgery is named after Frederick Mohs, uh, the man who invented the technique. And he was a medical student when he devised the procedure. And the principle is that the surgeon removes the skin cancer, examines it under the microscope, and then can take more if there's some left behind. And this way, it's precise tumor removal, um, but also preserving as much unaffected skin as possible. Uh, and with this, one can achieve cure rates of up to 99%. Why does cancer need Mohs surgery, and what types of skin cancer can be treated with the surgery? Mohs surgery is generally reserved for higher risk skin cancers. So those are skin cancers on the face, and in particular the T-zone of the face. So that's the eyes, nose, the lips, the ears. The reason these sites are critical is because one doesn't want to remove too much skin, uh, and it's important to remove just enough, but yet remove the tumor completely. The most common type of uh, skin cancer is basal cell carcinoma, and this is the most common reason for performing Mohs surgery. However, squamous cell carcinoma, the next most common, uh, is another indication for Mohs surgery. And there are other rarer types, such as lentigo maligna, an early form of melanoma, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, uh, just to name a few. There may also be factors to do with the tumor itself that make it high risk, not just where it is. That can include the size, if it's particularly large, whether it involves the nerves, whether it uh, has certain features on pathology, such as an aggressive or infiltrative subtype, and uh, very importantly, whether it's been treated before and come back. So these tumors known as recurrent or persistent tumors are more difficult than untreated tumors to, uh, to treat because as those cells have been left behind under the skin, they've grown and they can also be broken off or not be contiguous anymore. And that makes treatment second or third time much more difficult. So it's always best to treat in the right way the first time. Talk me briefly through the procedure and what someone can expect to happen. Mohs surgery is a local anesthetic procedure, and the Mohs surgery theatre is an outpatient theatre, which is located next to the Mohs laboratory. Uh, a patient is brought into the theatre, the site of the tumour is identified so that uh, we can ensure it's the right one and it's marked, and then anaesthetized with local anesthetic. Patients often worry about the local anesthetic being painful, and of course, although there's some discomfort, most surgeons are very adept at injecting local anesthetic and have uh, numerous tricks to make it as, as easy as possible for the patient. The next step is that the tumor is removed or debulked because we don't need to examine what we know is a tumor. And then it's excised with a margin of normal skin. Importantly, this margin is smaller or narrower than would be the case if it was done without no surgery. This is because we know that we can come back and take more then and there if there's a little bit left. It's taken as a saucer in quite a thin layer with a narrow margin, and then the Mohs surgeon will cut it into sections, ink the sections with different colors, so that he or she knows 
that that color responds to a certain point on the patient's face or body. It's then taken to the Mohs laboratory or the Mohs technician will flatten the saucer and cut the tissue. And this is another very important difference between Mohs surgery and normal surgery is the way that the tissue is processed. With normal surgery, the tissue is sent away in a formalin pot to the laboratory, which is somewhere else. It's processed over uh, 24 hours at least. And then the pathologist who wasn't there in the theatre will look at the sections, which are cut as a bread loaf, vertical sections, so that um, the pathologist will determine whether the tumour reaches the edge um, of the lateral margin and also the deep margin. If it does, it's obviously incompletely excised. If it's not, it's completely excised. However, because these vertical sections are only intervals across the tissue, there is room for error because the tumour may have strands between the slices which happen to be cut. So even when the pathology report appears to show that it's completely removed, it may not be. With most surgery, because it's taken as a saucer flattened and then cut horizontally, known as on fast sectioning, the whole margin is analysed. And because the Mohs surgeon also looks at the pathology then and there, he or she can decide exactly where to come back to on the patient's face or body to take more, if indeed that's necessary. Each of those stages may take around an hour or so, depending on how many sections that particular patient has. Dr. Nelly Petty, just to end off, what should or shouldn't people do post-op in order to recover as quickly as possible from the Mohs surgery? Uh, every patient is given uh, wound care instructions, and that will depend on what sort of wound there is. Sometimes such little tissue is removed um, that actually there is no formal reconstruction. The wound is just left to heal by itself. And the wound care may be an ointment, and a dressing such as even a simple plaster at times for um, a couple of weeks. Commonly, the wound is then pulled side to side and there's a direct closure. Other closures may involve flaps where cuts are made in different angles to access skin not so near to the, the defect that's created. And then, of course, there's skin grafts where skin is cut from somewhere else um, and then sewn onto the, the wound that's created. Uh, the most important thing to, to bear in mind, though, is that because the least amount of tissue is being resected or, or cut away, the likelihood of scarring uh, on balance will be less with most micrographic surgery than with standard surgery in wider margins. Thank you, Dr. Malapedi. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you.